Oh, I did it again. Found it faster this time. Hi, I'm Amber Nicole with Uncharted Tutoring. And it's hot. It's, it's really hot in the studio. Um, it's even hotter outside. I have my AC set to about 82, so it's 82 degrees in here right now. Hence the very uh, slick back hair, just trying to keep everything out of the way and like really back there. Um, it looks like one of my cameras isn't quite turning on. Let me see if I can adjust that. Um, let's see here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. We'll, uh, we'll do this. That should work. I think. I don't know. I don't know how any of this works. No, I do, but like... Still not, huh? Okay. What's this? Let's look at this. <sighs> well, let's try this. So many things to try. I'm, I'm going to try this one. this this is well, we're just we're gonna we're gonna move it because we're gonna get rid of that and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this and it's gonna do oh, I need my need my keyboard and I'm gonna adjust it uh, gonna do this I think nope not that we want this where did this go here we go now we're working and we're gonna change it to this. yeah that cool nice now you have all the things okay where we're coming from today um is it's hot outside and baby lock and sergio are currently at the doctors we'll see what they say when they bring it back or when they bring them back about a week and a half i know it's a long time to go without my sewing machines but i'll be all right um, both of them are going to get service. It's going to be amazing. But I happened to go to the Courier uh, this Sunday for a workshop on fascinators taught by the artist Omolara. Um, Omolara does fantastic work with fascinators, dye, fibers, that kind of thing. And so here I am, <clears throat> or at least here is the current status of my pieces. It's currently... Um, yeah, it's just like this is three. Or this is two layers of fabric, two layers of fabric, two layers of fabric, all right? Two layers of fabric, and then I have three layers of fabric on these little pieces, and um, two layers on this one. And then I realized, based on my sketch, that I would probably uh, flip this around, although it may not be that one because there's pen on it. So I may be flipping these around. And then flipping this around. Oh, then I need to make one of those. Um, bummer. This one has pen on it. And this ironing didn't quite stick. That's fine. I can iron that. Um, ideas for... Well, it looks like I'm just going to have to add black. I don't want to add black, though. So what I, what I want this to do is be 3D. So we've taken wire, strung these bugle beads onto it. I don't know if you can see that. Let's tilt this down a bit so you can see more what I'm talking about. Oop. Front heavy camera. There we go. Um, and we've, we've taken bugle beads, strung them along a wire that they fit on. And then um, let's adjust the focus here. I think, ooh, that camera is hot. We talked about this. I was going to fix it. There we are, that's focused. Um, and let's, ooh, let's change that field of view so you guys 
see a lot more about like what you actually want to see. Here we are. Look at me in my video. So it's wire, right? You can see this strung with these silver bugle beads. And when you're done, it looks something like this. Um, these are actually clear bugle beads, so I can almost kind of a smidge see that dark wire coming through. Um, and then you twist it together. We, we used a drill um, for some of these, but I hand twisted most of these. I think it's this one. No, that one looks... So it's one of these is like super duper regular, this one. This was done with a drill, and I suspect the other one of a similar shape. Yeah, was done with a drill. Okay. And the way we put them on the fabric is we, of course, we shaped our wire, put it down against the fabric, kind of traced where we were going to cut, and then um, ironed it with a, 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 an iron bonding type paper. And then we glued using, I think, 625 glue uh, these beads, the glass beads, directly to the uh, assembled fabric pieces, right? Giving it the ability to shape and cup. Look at that. So it's, it's very leaf-like. And then, um, again, with... Yeah, so I, I think I, what I want to do here is flip some of these shapes so that some of the colors yeah and I got a lot of sharpie on the backs of mine that's a bummer okay um, so that some of these can go the opposite direction it won't look weird basically I want to demonstrate the gluing process first thing and then add um, and it may not even work maybe I have the wrong number of uh, beads on here um, it may not even work, but I could also make my own. I've got enough fabric, I've got enough stuff just lying around that I could probably make my own. Uh, we'll see what I decide. I have fabrics, none quite this glittery. I have some neon orange. Ultimately, I'm going for fire. If you can't tell, I'm, I'm really quite going for fire with this look. Um, for a friend. I, I don't know if that friend is watching, so I won't say who. Um... And I have more than one friend getting married, and that friend is getting married. Uh, so I, I thought this might be fun little something something for... I don't know, just for fun. Really, just for fun. Um, I grabbed some red threads that I have lying around in a couple of different varieties. Just stuff I have. Um, we'll see how that goes. I have some skulls, too. Uh, maybe I should I'll be able to incorporate like some red skulls into this I think that could be really fantastic and um, yeah that's that's basically where I'm at uh, Omolora pointed out this technique that is the next step uh, to to these wires to this construction process I'm going to attempt it now, Omolora said that she, Omolora said thread is what O uses when when wrapping these things. There was raffia available at the workshop, and I thought I had some, but it uh, looks like I don't. Um, I thought I even had red since I was I was working in fire colors, and it looks like I don't. So uh, one of these three will work, or regular thread. Um, and Omolora demonstrated for me the technique used to wrap these things. And I am going to attempt it, I think. I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's, let's find that red thread I think I want to use. Oh, and it's not embroidery thread. Uh, that's used in this process. It's just sewing thread. Now, yeah, I don't have that much red thread. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this thread because I have a lot of it. And oh, I grabbed some spiky beads too because spiky beads are right. Hi, Anna. I love you too. I'm so glad you're here. So glad. I'm. Uh, Working away at like so here's like some spiky beads I could put on it, kind of punkster type things if I so decide. Um, 
little spikes. Little spikes are more appropriate. I haven't, I haven't really decided yet. Uh, what else? I'm feeling the red skulls though. The more I think about it, here we go. These are, these are kind of ah, uh, it's gunmetal. Now that I pulled it out of the bag, that's gunmetal. I don't want gunmetal. Rose gold could be good. The gold gold might not be bad, but I was avoiding gold gold. I don't know why. I have no good reason. Yeah, the rest are kind of more pyramid shaped, which isn't what I'm going for. I have plenty of sequins, I have rhinestones, I have like everything I could possibly need to make this amazing. The other thing that Omolora, that we didn't do with Omolora, is any clay work. And I feel like using tools I've learned, that's something I can bring to this project that wasn't like quite planned on, learned, that kind of thing. So that's going to be my like, ooh, something different that I add. Anna, I really am glad you're here. You'll be sad to hear that um, Baby Locke and Sergio are at the doctor's. It's good. It's good. It's fine. It's the regular checkup. They're just going to have some parts moved around, cleaned up, vacuumed, you know, oiled, those things. Because um, they're, they're good little creatures. Uh, let me get, I was thinking, I just, oh, some clay. I want to get some clay. <sighs> clay. I have lots of it. And I'm not using just any clay. This is a lightweight clay, kind of like the Model Magic from Crayola, but, um, not Model Magic from Crayola. Um, I'm thinking of what colors I can really throw in this to make it exciting. Um, that could work. It might be a little dramatic. I can always add pearlized powders into it to like make it look a little more intense. And I can paint it with watercolors. To, to add more. I know it's normal. It's just all the timing got like wildly off. And so I just, I had to give up. I had to give in and um, let them go to the doctor. It's fine. They're, they're fine. They are fine. I'm, I'm sure they are fine. I'm not really worried. It just means today's going to be a little different, um, which is good because I don't want this channel to be all about sewing. I do so much more than just sewing. Brown, yeah. Me, this brown's more better. I don't know. I am about so much more than just sewing, so it's totally fine. Really, am I saying that enough? Do I sound convinced? <laughs> I am about so much more than just sewing. But as a result of that, uh, wonderful. Here we go. That should be enough oranges and that kind of thing. As a result of that event that I went to. Um, I met another artist, Yasmin, who is working on a Pride Day event uh, here in Manchester, New Hampshire with The Courier. Um, and that's the, the art museum around here. And now I'm working with it <laughs> as well. So uh, apparently we are going to be doing a... Oh, I'm going to adjust to this just a smidge so you guys can get in one. Now, can you hear me? Oh, where to cut out? Uh, yeah, so I'm, oh, how is my sound, Anna? Um, I have fans going. My AC will turn on and off because it's really hot here. You're going to have to tell me if you're hearing background noise and so I can adjust it. Um, 
like I know that there's a fan going above me like you can see the flowers kind of dancing above me right here um, oh it's better than other days cool <laughs> Uh, I thought I was fixing sound. Anyways, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm working with the courier. I'm gonna with a couple other artists put together an eight foot by eight foot canvas at um, LGBTQ plus Pride Day on June nineteenth in Manchester. I am none of those things, but I am an ally, so I will be there supporting my friends um, who are, and chosen family who are, and helping to try and guide some of my students to those events as well, so that they can work with me on this collaborative piece. But mostly, I just really want to finish this fascinator, because um, I think my friend would really like it. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. And I just dropped the brown clay. Um, and today, I'll only be going to about 445, 4.50, uh, because I have a library uh, leadership meeting. So the, Man uh, the Manchester City Library uh, Foundation, which I am a member of, um, yeah, they, uh, we have a meeting tonight. So I will be attending that because I'm on the board. I'm an executive director, whatever that means. I don't know. I just try to work and raise money for them. That's it. Let's see. I'm going to wrap one strand first and see how that goes. I'm going to choose this strand. Um, see the wire, it's twisted. You know, I could try a different microphone. What if I switch to... This microphone. Is this any better? Is it louder? Because it's, it's the one right here. Um, this one that my fingers are at. So it's a little closer to my mouth. Anyways, let me know. Please do. So I'm going to take this red thread and I'm going to do exactly what Omolara showed me and we're going to wrap it in a loop-de-loop -loop formation. Oh wait, no. Okay, remember, I, I learned this from another artist. You like the other sound more? Alright, I'll switch it. You get to decide, Anna. How's this? You like this one better? Kai is great. Um, we've been able to actually like hang out in real life, which is super duper exciting and totally new for us with, um, with everything that's been going on. And um, yeah, we went for our usual walk, which was fun. But this time she brought her puppy. Well, it's not her, her puppy, it's, it's her significant other's puppy. Um, named Mia. So I got to meet Mia. And Mia is a really, really, really smart dog. Um, too smart for her own good. And I have experience working with dogs. So I'm going to help Kai with that dog. Because that dog can get away with a lot. Because <laughs> that dog is smart. Um, Yes, baby luck should be better soon. It only takes a little bit. You know what I mean. It's just it's just a checkup, you know? Like, ever, everyone needs a checkup every once in a while. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll mention this more when I get them back after they've taken a look at baby lock and, and all the things and, and how baby lock is doing. Um, but they, they mentioned, and I don't know how true this is, but they everything else they've mentioned to me has been accurate. In, in like with vacuums. So in the US, I don't know how it is in other countries, but sewing machines and vacuum places are usually the same place. Um, and these people were really great at recommending a good vac vacuum for my husband and I. So um, yeah, <laughs> I know, weird things. Um, weird things, but um, ah, don't fall. I caught it, I caught it, it's okay. 
But they, they mentioned that even though Baby Lock says Denim Pro on her, her body in letters, that she shouldn't really be used in denim. <laughs> They're like, yeah, that's just marketing. It's not actually good enough for this. I was like, what? Um, it's not good enough for as, as much denim as I've been throwing her way. Um, so I don't know what that's going to ultimately mean for Baby Lock. We will find out. Uh, they, of course, recommended the machines they carry in stock, which is like a Viking, I think, a Viking brand. Um, we'll see how, you know, how long it takes for Baby Lock to die. Um, I don't, I don't think, I, I think I can use her a lot longer. And, you know, she, she's so simple and straightforward, and she really has taken a beating for me. So, like, I feel like maybe they're wrong. I, I don't want them to be right, is what I've decided. <laughs> Am I allowed to decide that? I think so. Um, but sewing machines regularly have to be serviced. They just It's just a thing. But they said that the ex problems I was experiencing would probably get worse the more I used her on denim, which I thought was funny. Um, oh, and they also said they'd never seen a serger with the handle built in like mine is. Huh, what do you know? Um... Yeah, no, Baby Lock, she's got to have superpowers or something, right? We're just, we're going to find a way to make Baby Lock last forever, I think. Um, <laughs> let's see here. So I am looping Omolora. Omolora showed me this really cool trick to get multiple strands wrapped around this wire without cutting your thread so you don't have to make bumps. If you've ever wrapped anything in string, you understand bumps are annoying and they just often happen and sometimes you have to cut the string and restart when you didn't expect it and it's super duper annoying. So they showed me they showed me this trick. And it's looping the string back and forth and then and not cutting the string. So I'm gonna try it. Oh, recommended about four to five strands, whatever I thought I could handle. And so here I am, I'm gonna try five. Of course, I'm gonna go to the highest number right away because I'm ballsy. And and I'm struggling a little bit because I, you know, remember this is like, this is my first time doing this and I'm using my mouse here as a weight to hold this down. This is in fact my first time doing, well, you know, first time making anything with this process. Um, this is my second work session on this project. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Um, okay, so I think I've got five strands going. Now how... So we got it to this point. Now how do I do the next one? I forget. Okay, so it wraps around. And then how do I get those started and in? Did I need to start from the very, very start with four or five of them? Maybe. Gravy. Oh, well, Laura, if you watch this ever uh thank you for teaching me first and uh <laughs> i hope i don't make you feel bad <laughs> um because you you showed it to me and i walked away feeling confident i could do it but now I'm a little confused. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I'm going to I'm going to get it. So let's use this popsicle stick to bring the Ooh, you know what? I'm just going to make a loop right here and I'm going to pretend that loop is for bobby pins. Ooh, we uh, no cuz I know it's not. But <laughs> uh the way my students feel, right? Okay, so it here we are. Okay, so there's a little loop here. 
And what do I do with it? I guess I fold it down and wrap over it. Do you see the little loop? I'm trying to see if I can move these things out of the way so you can see in contrasting color. Um, I've got this loop right here and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it as I incorporate it. So I'm going to just, I'm going to wrap down. No, I'm going to wrap. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to hide that loop by wrapping over it. That has to be the right thing to do, right? Where are my leather workers? <laughs> Where are my leather workers? I know I have leather workers that are watching me. Maybe this is something similar to your process. Um, Calvindor and, and partner. <laughs> Adopt you, but what about, what about uh, Sonia? Doesn't, doesn't Sonia want to adopt you? Here we are. Okay, I'm gonna wrap around that loop. It's how it's gonna happen. I don't know. Okay, wrap around. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll this up so it stops getting in the way. Yeah, like that. Okay. Right. Anna, doesn't doesn't Sonia wanna adopt you? Isn't that a thing? Here we are. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. It's gonna work. I didn't do it. What did I do wrong? I'm not certain. I'm gonna hold it with my nail and hope that's enough. You know what? The first time you make anything, it, it never looks as good as the second time or the professional that taught you. That's all there is to it. And you shouldn't feel ashamed of that because they have so much time and skills practicing. But I, I know how you feel when you watch me do stuff. Because um, when I meet another artist who works in a different way or has more skill in, a, in an area where I'm not, I, I feel similar. I will be an adorable mother. Eh, who knows? It might not be for me. I have not decided whether I even want to be a mother. Not 100% at least. I, will, I, I might adopt a kid one day. I am not ready right now, though. Gosh, my house alone has too much, like, old paint in it and stuff, so it needs to be kid-proof first. <laughs> um... I think I'm doing this right. Was it, does it look like I'm doing this right? So we're gonna wrap. And this, it takes so much longer to wrap with thread than it does yarn or other things. And I knew that when, when Oma Laura started showing me this process and I was like, oh lordy, that's gonna be a challenge. But I felt like I was up for it, so I decided to try it. But like I, I went to this workshop and it's so funny because I, I saw the museum, the art museum here, it's a really good art museum, post about this thing. My friend Lisa, who works for the art museum, posted about it and I was like, ooh, this thing, it's happening. And I was like, ooh, I bet that means Lisa's going. And Lisa and I are friends, but we've never actually like met in person um, because we've become friends over the pandemic. And so I was like, ooh, I could meet Lisa there. And um, so I... I signed up and I shared it. And then it turns out like a bunch of my friends signed up because I signed up. So I show up and what do you know, it's 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 a bunch of, of my friends and, and their kids and they're all taking the workshop. So I, it was really cool to like see some of these people for the first time since the pandemic really got like started and um, just work together being creative. And it was such a, a Oma Laura made such a safe space, you know, making sure everyone was taken care of either from like a pronouns perspective or a, um, a disability perspective. Um, it, was, it was a really great first like public event to go to since, since the pandemic shut down. Um, I felt safe and, and taken care of. And while I was there and talking, um, one of her assistants was Yasmin who um, liked what I was doing and, and, and liked the way I talked. And um, it was so funny. I got, I was so awkward. You know, it's been so long since I really interacted with people um, like in real person. So I was, um, 
I was sitting there just working away and Yaz, Yasmin comes up to me and I was like, you're gay, right? So, uh, pride day is coming up and I'm kind of looking for help. And I was like, uh, actually not gay, but, but, but a supporter, a supporter. <laughs> and my friend Kelly to the left goes ally, the words ally. I was like, Oh, that's what it is. That's right. That's what we call it. Um, <laughs> So I had a little embarrassing moment uh, while I tried to wordsmith. But this this person seems really cool. Yasmin um, does does their own artwork and um, is really active in Black Lives Matter. And it looks like really active in LGBTQ stuff. So I feel like this is a friend that I need to be in touch with. So, um, you know, I found her on Instagram and, and we started talking and stuff. And um, so I'm, I'm working with her, volunteering with her at, at Pride in Manchester to do this eight foot canvas, um, which I am really, really stoked about. And uh, we got to talking and I don't know why I just like she was <laughs> she mentioned she was like, oh, sorry, I'm not responding. Like I'm getting a tattoo. So it's been a day. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like who like that just sounds like a cool person. You know what I mean? Like I'm getting a tattoo. So I'm not even looking at my phone. This is a me moment. And I feel like that person needs to be my friend. So um, I replied back. I was like, I feel like we should do lunch. You want to do lunch? And she was like, how about Wednesday today? Um, cause they're doing the canvas stretching for this event and I can't, couldn't do today cause I've got this and I had lunch already scheduled with a friend and I've got other things happening. And, um, I was like, I can't do it today. So we're going to go for drinks, um, at Republic, one of my favorite restaurants, um, on Tuesday. I'll let you know how that goes on the next stream. It should be really cool. I just, it's so cool to meet other artists and like, I don't know, like, I know I'm a real artist, but sometimes I really question it. I have a lot of imposter syndrome. So, um, I'm really excited to meet Yaz, like get to know Yaz better, uh, find out, you know, how did she get connected at the courier? How does she do all these things? And, um, and her involvement with black lives matter and, and all that kind of stuff. So I just can't wait to get to know her better. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, she also seems to do a lot of collaborative pieces, like with other artists, like some out of MIT and, and other places. So I don't know, just seems like someone I should know, I think. And I wouldn't have met her unless I'd, I'd gone to this event. Um, so I'm, I'm proud of myself for going outside of my like hold up hobbit you know, comfort zone and going to this event. Boy, thread is taking forever. We knew this though. This was known. We would knew, we knew this was going to be a thing as I work. <laughs> we really did. Each one of these strands is going to get wrapped with thread like this. Um, and then wrapped again in their various positions. So that's going to be fun. It's going to take forever if I really do use thread for everything. But because Omalora said thread was the thing to use, I am attempting it for the first one, at least. We'll see if it's the one I continue using. I mean, I'm not anticipating becoming a professional um, fascinator maker. Aw, oh, thanks. I am too. You know, it's been a while since I made a new friend. My, I made Benjamin became my friend. Um, during the pandemic, uh, you know, we just talked on the phone and we talked on screen and a little bit here and there in person. Um, but I only made one new friend during the pandemic. Um, and it's funny cause I, I had, I had lunch with him today. So, you know, learning about his, you know, career plans and stuff is pretty exciting. He's doing so, some cool stuff. Um, oh, and I made another friend this weekend. Actually, I made actually several new friends this weekend. Um, cause Kai had a shindig at her house and, um, not like a, an official party or anything, just people coming over to grill. And since I'm a vegetarian, I kind of skipped the grilling part and brought a salad and ate after everyone else ate. Um, but I did bring ice cream for everyone, um, which of course immediately makes you everyone's best friend. Um, <laughs> uh, which was, 
really cool to do. And I finally got to meet one of Kai's longtime best friends, um, Tanya, who is who's spitfire, man. Like when you meet people who are just got energy and like, yeah, you know, you just they're good people. They're good people. And she immediately warmed up to me and gave me a hard time like is normal for her in all relationships. So um, I hope I can be her friend back too. And of course, all the, the biker people, she, she rides motorcycles, all her biker friends. It's just, I feel like life is kind of getting back to what it was before everything. We're getting there. It will take time. I know that the U.S., though, has been, like, hogging vaccines. So, like, I suspect a lot of you who are watching this, like, especially if you're in another country, can't quite get back to normal because the U.S. has hogged all the vaccines. For that, I am sorry. I'm very sorry. Not that I can make my administration do anything else. I have no control. Don't think I do. Wow. Um, hydrate. But uh, I just downed my water way early. Way earlier than my schedule said I should. Um, we'll figure that out. How about you, Anna? So you've been going to work with Sonia. How's that been? Are you making friends? Here we go. Now I suspect that the having the thread wrapped around the wire keeps it from bending more than is a good idea, really. Uh, and it also, it's sometimes wire can be slippery, so if you're wrapping it with thread, it probably allows places of friction to happen. Uh, Omalora didn't talk about why we wrap the wire, but that's my guess. Just my guess. I don't know anything, though. Omalora is the ex expert. I should probably, like, in the comments, add her website or something. Add Omalora's website. And probably Yaz's. It was funny, I uh, I brought Baby Lock and Sergio into Backman and Bobbin. You never leave home, but you make friends, right? You, you go online and you make friends online. Now, do you never leave home because of your health stuff or do you never leave home because of COVID? Um, so I walk into Vacman and Bobbin with um with baby or yeah with baby lock and I'm like all right I'm bringing you a celebrity there's these these machines are celebrities on Twitch and he was like what really I was like yeah people watch me so and he was like that's hard to believe I said I know they're not actually that famous but there are some people on on Twitch that really care about them so so treat them well Vacman and Bobbin are the uh the serger and sewing machine doctor. <laughs> All right. I don't know if I like this process. This is taking a wild amount of time. I'm definitely going to have to do more than four next time. And I'm still not sure as to why I mean, I guess it's thinner and it goes faster. Okay, I, I think I follow the why here. You're scared of leaving because of the virus or something else? Or because you could fall asleep or something? There, there is a condition called agoraphobia, which is when people are scared of leaving their homes so they don't go outside ever. It's a real thing.
right, and we twist, and we twist. Now, Oma Laura was like sure that wanted to make sure I was using uh, motions that would be sustainable because Oma Laura really, really worked the, you know, wanted to make sure carpal tunnel wasn't going to be in my future. Yeah. Will people hurt you though? Like your your sister and her her boyfriend are in jail, right? So they won't hurt you. Are there others that are after you? Still wrapping, still wrapping, just in case you weren't sure. I just sat up for a minute so that I could stretch my back. The messages scare you? What messages? Are people sending you messages? That scare you? What are you worried about, Anna? That person doesn't know where you live. They, they don't know. You should block them and report them to, to Twitch. And when they get a new name, you report that to Twitch and you tell them that they're constantly doing that. And don't ever respond. Don't ever respond. As a matter of fact, it's going to be policy on my channel that I won't respond either. I'm just going to start blocking people who do things that are rude to my my followers and friends who are visiting me. Have you told that person where you live? Because Brazil is a big place. And unless you've given them your address, they don't know where you live. Okay, so I don't think they can hurt you. Pretty sure of it, actually. I know that sounds really sure and confident, but like, I'm pretty sure. Whew. Wow, this is going a little smoother than I thought it would. I mean, it's taking time. I wonder if there's a way I can speed this up. Maybe using a drill. If they don't know where you live, you're fine. Eh. Different life experiences lead towards different confidences. But that's why I like, I try to use logic when I, sometimes I get scared of things that don't always make sense. Um, and so I try, I'm not always perfect at it, but I try to use logic. Calvin Dor, I was just talking about you. I was like, where are my leather people? because what I'm doing right now, I feel like might be more up your alley and you might know something about what I'm doing. Um, so 
I took a workshop this weekend with the artist Oma Laura, who makes fascinators. And uh, it was a really great workshop. <laughs> yeah, I bet they were. It was a really great workshop um, where I learned a bunch and a bunch of my friends showed up. And so I did not get to finish. It was, it was more packed, I think, than they anticipated. It was the first workshop they'd done in person the whole year. But so I'm, I'm making, I guess, a fire-themed orchid lamp, uh, fascinator uh, is what I would, I would call it. Um, and the process really is so detailed. <laughs> so for, for, I'll, I'll, let me, I'll, when my hands aren't actively twisting, I'll show you exactly what I, we did here. Um, Oh no, how do I finish it? Oh yeah, glue. We finish it with glue. Um, so I asked a bunch of questions. I, I, I got to a finishable, like I, to each of the steps before everyone else and helped other people get there because that's just who I am. Um, but I had a lot of experience and I brought my own tools, which was a really good call because there weren't really enough tools to go around. Okay, um, let me, I'm gonna clip this so that I can show you kind of what I'm talking about. I think that's clipped. Eh, maybe, maybe not. Okay, um, so we have these pieces that that we made. Um, and it's this is two layers of fabric. This was um, a specific type of fabric. I forget, I wrote it down. It's a really stiff kind of straw feeling fabric. Um, and then ironed on to, you know, your typical acetate type fabric that's really super shiny and fun. And um, you string on some bugle beads onto a very fine wire like this. And then you twist the base. And then this outline becomes the outline of the petal, right? Or the, or the, the leaf or whatever it is you're making. And um, you glue it on with 625. Um, press it for at least a half hour so that it can set. And then you can, you know, begin to move the pieces kind of independently if that makes sense can you see the the bow i've got going on because of this it's also coming off i'll have to re-iron it um and the, and the fabric pieces are ironed uh of course together using just iron on backing and so the 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 wires we we twist twist to make something stronger and then we wrap the wires and i'm sitting here wondering a couple of things i'm sure but the one that's in the forefront of my mind right now with these so i'm wrapping Omalora recommended wrapping with thread more than anything, um, which, so that's what I just did was wrap this in thread, which did take a long, long time. Now I have some yarns too that could take faster. Um, in the workshop, uh, they used raffia, um, all the, the artists and people taking place in that. And that's something, um, it's a little thick looking. And then there's, I have this stuff that isn't raffia, but it's kind of grainy and thready. I don't know. I feel like I could be using this instead of thread. Um, it's a little more slippery, uh, but it kind of, it, I think it's the, it's the stuff you use like on balloons. I don't know. Wh where, why do I think this is balloon stuff? It's just, it's really thin. So you can kind of, if you can unravel it, it's this really, really thin plastic that's just kind of twisted together. Um, there, can you see that? I've untwisted it. Um, it makes crinkle noises. I think I could wrap with this, but that may not give me the roughness. So I think, I think, and this, this is my question now that we're here. I think we're wrapping these things in thread for, um, friction. Cause I think when I start assembling it, like sometimes wire can be a challenge to just kind of wrap around one another. Um, so I think that's why we're wrapping it in thread. Do you know this process at all? Like, Omalora didn't mention the why behind it. Um, and I <laughs> I should have asked why, uh, but I didn't. So uh, is that, is that, what do you think? What do you think about the process? Yeah. So you think, you think the primary purpose of the thread is probably to give it 
friction. You know, because once I understand the primary purpose here, um, then I understand what the goals I'm going for. Florist tape, that's a good point. That's a good point. I don't have that line around. That is an excellent point. All right, we're going to super glue the end here, which we know won't actually stick to the wire, but it should stick to the threads. And then I'll, I'll squirt a little water on top of it to cure it. And as long as they stick to each other, it should hold, I think. Sorry, I took Calvinator's, Calvin Doors, excuse me. Covendor's attention right when he walked in the door because I was like, ooh, someone who might know the answers to this. <laughs> there we are. All right, let's let that set, right? Coolness. Just a little water. Oh, here's my zombie slime. Do you guys want to see the zombie slime I made um, yesterday with my students? This one happens to smell like earthworms. So if you can close your eyes and imagine a really wet garden just full of earthworms, that's what this slime smells like. It's got worms in it, it's got bones in it, it's got a creepy skeleton in it. Um, and it's the color of like a decaying zombie, I think. And yeah, parts of it glow in the dark and there are maggots in it. Um, it's, it's a wonderful slime. <laughs> but this is zombie slime. So it smells like earthworms. Hello, hi, I'm the zombie in the slime. Um, <laughs> so slime is one of my biggest sellers uh, in science classes, believe it or not. Um, I have more than 50 individual slime recipes for doing different things. And my slimes all teach something different. And this one is talking about bruises, hematomas, blood flow, bacteria, what, how a zombie apocalypse might actually work, um, and what does zombies smell like? So it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. So let's see, can we find a maggot? Here, I, oh, I see an earthworm. Let's pull out an earthworm for you. Here we go. It's an earthworm. Nice, right? Nice little earthworm. Um, here's a bone. Here's a nice bone, just a random bone. Ooh, there's there's a maggot. There you go, a maggot. Um, and parts of it glow in the dark, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. But we make slimes. It's way too much fun. This one, I think, turned out particularly well color-wise for, for my goals. But um, it smells like like a garden. This smells like a, no, don't eat it. I mean, you can make bite marks in it and stuff, but I wouldn't actually eat it. Um, no, this is made, um, it's basically made out of glue, um, baking soda, and a borax, boric acid solution. I use contact solution because parents freak out about it the least. Um, oh, there's the maggot again. <laughs> so it's, the kids, kids love this stuff. Oh, here's a glow worm. Oh, I thought I saw a glow worm. Here it is, yeah. So I put little glow worms in it, because why not? Eee! There it is. You see it? It's a little glow worm. It glows in the dark. Um, anyways. Oh, here's another maggot. <laughs> uh, so we talk about decomposition and bruises and anatomy. <laughs> it's fun. Um, but yeah, we, this is what we made in class yesterday. Oh, all right. On that note, though, I need to go get more water because it's hot. <laughs> Can you guys hold on just a second? Um, I'll be right back. OK, if anyone pops in, can you tell them where I've gone? I really need water. I'm going to put up the be right back need tools because obviously hydrating is a tool. OK, all of you go get a glass of water.
I'm back. Uh, thanks for waiting. Thanks for your patience. Really needed water. And I decided to treat myself. I'm going to... This is going to be weird, guys. You've probably never seen this happen before. Um, I'm going to put my Zevia soda in my unsweetened polar vanilla seltzer. It's a way to make it a little less sweet. It's probably going to make a mess. Artistic skills. Not bad. I think I only spit like a drop or two. Oh, but I really need all the hydration I can get. Okay, look, th these ice cubes are going to be gone in a few minutes. Just saying. Won't be long. But, um, yeah, it's just a little less sweet. I don't need that much sweetness. Um, oh, it's warm. 82 degrees right now in the studio. And 82 is quite comfortable, in my opinion. Ah. <laughs> oh, no. Well, Kelvindor, thanks for joining us. And I hope your home and property and things around you are safe in the storm. Um, I do understand and uh, have been there myself. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try wrapping the next one. And I think I'm going to go with the thread again. Um, I'm not disappointed with the effect that it created. So uh, we're going to go with it again. Yeah, so today I'll probably only be going till for another 45 minutes-ish um, because I have a library uh, foundation board meeting. So I'm on the foundation board of the library. We do fundraising for the library. And uh, today is the meeting, so I'm going to have to go to that. But I'm going to wrap another uh, stem in the meantime. Do, 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 where'd my thread go? Oh, I put it on the floor, because that's a good place for it. I think? Question mark? <laughs> yeah, uh, I hope that storm is... Stay safe, okay? That's all. Just, just stay safe. You awake, Anna? I know, sometimes you come and go, and that's all right. Um, so I roughly made the last wrapping about four times the length, and I was left with just a little left over, which I feel like is a good place to be. So I'm going to do this one at the same, same spot. And I'm going to start with four wrapping around. And then I still have to trim it, though, off of this one. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, we're just going to cut with this, because I, I think my scissors, my fabric scissors, are still probably uh, in the bag I took with me to that event somehow. It happens. All right. Over here, let me use a magnet here to kind of give me some place to grab it. And we're gonna wrap it back and forth. Oop, it came off the magnet. <laughs> there we are. When I'm gonna go for more than four this time. Four seems to be what I did the last time, but I'm gonna go for more. Huh, I wonder if I can put this on a magnet. No, I can't. Uh, we'll figure out a, a spool method. That would be nice. School method. One, two, oh, I'm, I'm like under the thread. That's not what I wanted. Here we go. Three, ha, 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 ha. Any Sesame Street viewers? No, it's okay. almost almost a four so this is almost four there we are four Ugh. I dropped it I'll just go with it from the floor it seems to work there 
five. This is, if this goes well, this is six. How do I define goes well? I don't know, but now I have extra string in here somehow. How did that happen? I picked up extra string, y'all. That's hilarious. Um, and some of it matches, which is really complicated. Eh. Ah, I got it out. Okay, cool. Cool. I'm feeling like an adult. So this is six. And seven. We're gonna we're gonna end it there. <laughs> I feel like I'm pushing my luck. Oh, well, we're gonna go to eight basically because it's got a double. All right, we're going to eight. And this is the petal we're gonna wrap. And I'm gonna do the method where you like fold it down and then wrap up and then back down. It does create a little bit of a bump at the beginning, but like um, this thread is pretty thin, so I think it's gonna be barely visible. I'm gonna clamp it here just to try and help my fingers kind of act like a third hand, and we're gonna wrap. So why this and not embroidery thread is my question. Um, Kelvin Dor may know the answer, but he disappeared. You know, and Kelvin Dor made the great recommendation of florist wire. As I wrap this down as tightly as my fingers allow. Ooh, that's looking good. Oh, I'm much preferring the like seven or eight. I guess we got to eight strands of thread instead of the four. Oh yeah, that looks way better. Just a little more stable looking, I guess. Everyone's got a lot going on lately. Even I have, I've noticed. Oh, and I'm kind of catching things. There we are. I've got something going on. It's all caught gravy down here at the bottom. I did something weird and I got to figure it out. You know what's super revitalizing is going to lunch with friends who have like real goals in life that are like going to make the world a better place and hearing about those goals. It's and then like knowing that you might be able to help them one day and help them get to like their superhero spot is so cool. It's so cool. I had to have lunch with my friend Benjamin and he just, he has so much like in his head that he's going to do in the world and he's going to do it so well. He really is. There we are. Oh, look at how smooth that's wrapping. And then by having this uh, little clamp on here, it's helping me, you know, rotate using my fingers, I think, instead of my wrist, which will reduce my likelihood of carpal tunnel. Got to roll with the fingers and not the wrist. Because my family is already prone for carpal tunnel. And, uh... I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want more surgeries on my limbs. I've had enough.
it's enough. God, I had this horrible thought. You know how sometimes, like, so I've been listening to music more, but it's super hot, and I don't like in-ear headphones, so I always use the over-ear headphones. And I opted not to use my headphones today because it was so hot, and I'm just walking, and so, like, you know, my anxiety head starts going, and random thoughts pop into my head, and I was like, what if, like, the next right answer for me health-wise is to get a different surgery on my feet that could correct my my really bad feet, my flat feet. It was, we didn't discover it until after we'd done the almost right surgery for me, but this other surgery would have been the absolutely right surgery for me. Um, and, you know, so I just had to recover from the almost right one and we don't have to do the really right surgery unless things get really bad. Um, but if you were gonna open up my foot, it made sense to, to do the right one anyways. Um, but like, I don't know why I let my brain go there, but I totally did. And I was like, maybe it just makes sense. I was like, I don't know if I could survive another summer of not doing anything, another summer of being unable to walk. And then another what year and a half of recovery. Oh, I don't know why my brain went there anyways. So I have anxiety if you didn't know, um, I totally do. Woot woot, upvote, follow for the anxiety ridden prone people. Um, just saying. Boy, I hope Kelvindor's property life and. What is it? Property life and moneymaker, whatever that is. Uh, no, I, you know, uh, occupation, thank you, um, is safe in this whatever storm they're encountering. That sounds challenging. Trying really hard to follow Omolora's recommendations to wrap with fingers and not wrist. Here we are, wrap, wrap, wrap. Super exciting, it's not as exciting as the sewing machines. I know, you all miss them, um, but they will be back. They're just getting some help. <sighs> but I'm wrapping this and it's looking really good. Do you see this? It looks a lot better than the other one I just wrapped. See, this one doesn't look as even. Do you see the difference? I don't know if you can see the difference on camera. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of the way this one's looking. It's a little thicker, but I'm not too worried about that. Oh, Melora's hands were like all kinds of beat up like a real artist's hands. It was kind of refreshing to see. Because sometimes I feel bad that my hands aren't like super pretty. Like I'm putting on camera for you guys, but like, you know, I will always have little dark patches under my nails and in my skin here. No matter how hard I scrub, they don't come out. Um, sometimes it's dye, sometimes it's dirt. But man, oh man, is my garden doing awesome. So, you know, would I sacrifice not working in my garden so my hands would look good? Probably not. Actually, that's not a probably. No, no, I would not. And twisting, twisting without inducing, hopefully, a uh, carpal tunnel. You guys, if you are creatives and you are making stuff like this, you need to understand that um, the repetitive actions you do can really have heavy negative effects on your hands, um, like carpal tunnel. So it's important to do whatever you can to protect yourself. So see how I'm twisting using my fingers? Instead of my wrist, I'm trying so hard to follow Omolora's example. Omolora told me that this, you know, my, my first actions as I was making the twists in these things were um, not great for my, my wrists. And I, I understood where O was coming from. Um, but... Um, 
I was just doing it quick for the workshop, but then I was like, but I do that a lot. Like that one little thing where I just don't do it quite right or I could hurt myself or whatever. Don't do it to yourself, people. Just, you don't need to. So don't. Um, treat yourself better than that. That's what I have to say about that. Hi, Anna, you're back. I'm talking about treating yourself better. <laughs> um, especially if you're making art and doing repetitive motions. Like if I were just not caring, I would be like twisting my wrist repetitively. But instead I'm trying to like twist with my fingers and guide with my other hand so that it wraps nicely and not induce repetitive motion injuries like carpal tunnel. Um, Cause Omalora was right to call that out. I call it out on my students all the time um, when they're doing something that's gonna hurt them. So good on Omalora. By the way, people, if you haven't figured out, Omalora has uh, pronouns that are, well, Omalora's pronouns are O, beloved, and love. So if I use those, those are the pronouns for me to, refu re 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 to refer to Omalora. Um, I rather find them endearing. All right, let's unwrap from the... Oh. From the magnets here because it's getting a little tight. I'm going to continue wrapping just like Omalora showed me. See, I get to learn stuff too, and it's super exciting when I do. This is not a process I would have figured out on my own. And why a fascinator making class? I don't know. It, it was just the first in person thing that the courier did, and you know, I have friends that are into making headpieces, and I've made my little hat pieces, right? Um, so, like, there's that. I felt like it would be a good little extension for something that I've kind of delved in without any real knowledge at all. So, I learned things. And then I get to teach you the things I learn. And wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap. <laughs> there you go. And we're going to call that the end here. And I'm going to put a little glue on it, right? So that it holds. So we gotta wrap, you know, put that glue on there all the way around just a smidge so that it like stays. And Omalora said to just clip it, like pinch it with your fingers, but Omalora used 825 glue, glue and I am using super glue. So um, just saying. So here's a little water, work it in, set that super glue. We've talked about how water does that on this channel before. And I have all this left over. Um, so I am going to cut this extra left over and I'm going to start my next one. Why not? We're going to practice and, and put this theory to test. The reason Omalora does this loopy thing instead of cutting them is because Love said they would, like, you could restart it without cutting. I'm still not sure how that works because I haven't gotten to that point, but I'd like to test it and get to that point. So I'm going to cut this here. How do you feel about that? <laughs> and a little experiment. I'm gonna learn something from like an artist who gets like artist residencies. So they like they must be like the coolest artists on the planet. And trim it with my rollers here because my scissors are still in my travel bag. And let's try a different one. Yeah? Which one? A short one. It should be a short one. This one's kind of short. Let's go with the short one. So I'm going to do the loop thing again where I loop over what it is I made. And um, hope that that does what I think it's going to do. Um, so I see, I'm seeing a little boo-boo. Um, this is where I folded that wire back down again. So I'm going to, there we go, fold that into itself so it doesn't stick out. 
There we are. Yeah? I don't know. I just made up the shape. I don't know why. It's kind of orchidy. I was going for orchid. I don't know if it looks like an orchid. Does it look like an orchid to you? Mm -mm. Also, hydrate, folks. It's hot out. And wrap back around the, the strand that I have. See that? It, there's some going down this way. And by keeping some of that string going down, I'm basically kind of creating a little bit of a knot that will just kind of hold it in place. And remember, we're going to do our carpal tunneliness, and we are not going to do a repetitive motion with our wrists because we know what that does long term, and we don't want that. We do not want that. Nice. Here we are, wrapping it again. Well, not again. This is the first time I've wrapped this piece, but I'm doing another wrap. And it's looking really good. But I suddenly have this feeling we're not actually going to get to the end of the strand. Whoops. Which was one of the things I was hoping to kind of test in this, this here process. You like watching me? Oh, I'm so glad, because I worry that I am way too boring. <laughs> um, I really worry, because it's like I'm just wrapping wire and thread. But if you like it, good. I'm happy. I, I like doing it, so, and I would probably be doing it anyways, so. <laughs> now people get to see it and enjoy it, right? That's the whole point. So glad you like watching it. But Anya, isn't Anna, Anna, Anya, I combined your name with Sonia's. Um, Anna, isn't Sonia going to adopt you? Or I don't know how it works in your country. What is, what is what's going to happen there? Sophia, thank you, Sonia. I can see where I got that mixed up. Sophia, much more pretty. There we go, keep wrapping the wires. Keep wrapping the wires. Meditative wrapping. I got to talk to my friend who makes music again. Um, she's interested in making music that I can play on the channel. She just needs to sit down and record herself. So I'm really hoping I can do that and play music for you guys while I work. Would that be cool? Follow me if you want me to have music. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just being silly. Wrap, 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 wrap. I don't think that's copyrighted. I don't know where I got those notes. Um, ooh, exciting things. You don't know if she really likes you. She let you in your house. That's, uh, she takes you to work with her. I, I think that means she likes you. Why, why would you think that Sophia doesn't like you?
You, you have to like someone quite a bit to let them into your house and let them live with you and feed them and take them to work with you and all those kinds of things. That is not something you do for someone you don't like. Just saying, like, I know I have a, like, weird take on life, but I don't think it's so weird that I'm wrong on that one. So we're going to dip the string in water first, because I've got a little bit here on the, there we go. And I bet that's going to help us solidify our super glue here. Don't get any on your finger if you can help it. And glue it all in, right? There we are. I think that'll do. There we go. Add on a little more water. Ooh, got a little on my fingers. It's alright. It's alright. Okay, so... Uh, that's all the string I have left. I don't think I'm going to try that again with what's remaining, even though I could. It's just going to be easier, I think, to restart it. Okay, we're going to restart this one, and we're going to go for at least the eight strand again. And this may be the last one I wrap on camera. Here we go. So I have whoop, super glue stuck a little bit to my cords. There we go. So I have one, two, shouldn't I have three? Where's three? Here's three. So I have three of these wrapped, just like Oma Laura showed me. Huh? Pretty cool, right? Let's do this again. So we're going to wrap this around using the magnets, because magnets are here and they are good tools. Good. We're good. It didn't break. It didn't break. It didn't break. Three, four. Four. Ha 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 ha. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, and ten. We're going to go to ten. We're going to two more strings than I last did. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm not, I'm not really worried. It just seems, ten seems pretty reasonable and manageable. So it's ten threads. Really five, but doubled over, you know, in that way. And I'm very convinced that Sonia likes you. All right, we're going to do this one next. So again, I'm going to hold it here, and I'm going to give it a little clampy clamp, because it will help me. Clampy clamp. And I'm going to wrap kind of up and then back down, and that wrapping will um, kind of lock it in place by going over its tail, if that makes sense. And Omalora was sure to point out to me not to go straight up directly next to the, the petal or leaf that you're doing, but to leave a little space so that you had wiggle room. You know, I think Omalora also mentioned glue up here, but I, I haven't done glue because I haven't found it necessary, but we'll throw a little moisture on there and throw a little glue in. It might help stabilize or some jazz. Anna, why wouldn't, why wouldn't Sophia like you? You seem all right to me. And we wrap back down over that tail that remains underneath and that, like, 
makes it solid. Mm. I don't know how else to describe it. It just kind of locks it in place. Roma Laura does this a lot, so Love probably has a way, way better way to describe this. Again, I am not the professional here. This is just something I'm messing around with that Oma Laura taught me at a workshop at the Courier Museum of Art here in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, find your local art museum and attend workshops. They usually get like really cool artists who like just want to get their art out there and make more art and talk to people and run workshops. Yeah, we all do that, Anna. Um, I regularly question whether my husband loves me, even though I know he does. Like, he wouldn't have married me if he didn't. I get it. I don't think you have to worry about it. I'm pretty sure Sophia likes you. But it can be hard to remember that. Here we go. Twist and wrap, twist and wrap. Remember guys, arts and crafts is not always fun, dramatic, and exciting. <laughs> it's true. Uh, it's true. Um, sometimes it's a lot of repetitive stuff. Repetitive motions, right? So those repetitive use injuries, like I was talking about, can be a little intense. So rather than continuing to twist by the, the feather or the petal or the whatever you want to call this, the sepal, the leaf, um, you know, by twisting it to here and then using that as a lever, I can um, doo -doo -doo, reduce the strain at that that very delicate point where the string kind of just begins to overlap the wire and that's going to be a weak point always hence why we don't go straight up to the pedal all the time Doo -doo -doo. and I'm just wrapping it my garden's doing pretty good um, I'm trying to think of anything exciting in it. Um, the, le uh, the leaves, the beans have sprouted um, quite nicely. Um, most of, no, not even most of my flowers. I have about a quarter of my flowers in the ground. That's nice. Hey, Kelvin Dorr, welcome back. Yeah, they happen. Um, but they're so exciting and pretty to watch. Like every time they happen around here, I like to go out on my porch and watch them. I can see lightning all the way down to Boston pretty much in this one little street um, across the street from my house. And um, like if I watch the sky kind of in between house roofs and stuff down that street, I can see all the way to Boston and it is super exciting. Um, I love watching thunderstorms on my porch. <laughs> But, you know, they can also destroy my sunflowers, so they don't have all love, but it is mostly enjoyment from me. Did everything end up okay, Calvin Dorr? Everything is safe? There we go, we're still wrapping wires. I'm on my fourth, my fourth wire here. And gone up to 10 strands. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to be like ready all the time, like when it's slender storm season right like make sure your your hanging planters it can, can come down right away and all that kind of stuff i get that 
They really did a number on my sunflowers at one point last year. But that's natural, I guess. There we are. Look at this go. I'm getting a, I th feel like I'm getting a hang of this. <laughs> Finally, on the fourth one. I don't know. But I'm really getting somewhere with it, I feel like. Like it's it's wrapping and it's gonna be able to grip and then I'll be able to wrap them together and do something interesting. I feel like it's kind of like a daisy chain effect when you put these all together. So working hard to avoid those. Am I using craft thread? I'm actually using serger thread because I have a lot of red th serger thread. Um, but yeah, so it's it's sewing thread. Um, and I've looped it to 10 strands that I'm looping all together at once. I asked about, I asked Omalora about uh, embroidery thread and Love just was not inclined to, to say that I should use that. In the workshop, um, raffia was available for our use. Uh, but I, I had to leave like a few minutes early. So I did not, I did not get to that stage. Um, yeah, so I think it's just for friction and a little bit of like protection on the wire um, and a way to like hold it together once we, cause, so once you wrap each strand, you're gonna wrap each of them together in their various positions. Um, so I don't know. I imagine that this wrapping is important to make sure that they don't slip in and out after you wrap them together. But wrap, 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 um, Gosh, I should, I should develop theme music that every time I do like a certain task, like something repetitive has certain music. You know, when I bring out Sergio, it's a different music. Baby Lockett's her own theme song. Um, sewing has certain theme songs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, that is exactly it. It's the twisty ties wrapped in plastic. Very much so. It just gives you something to grip on and to use, I guess. Um, something grippy. Gosh, it's so funny. I um, I went to a, a different workshop by a beading artist many, many years ago. I, I signed up all my girlfriends. We all went. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, well, we had a lot of fun afterwards. The the teacher. I don't think was used to our demographic, if that makes sense. I think we were a lot younger than they were used to. This was like 10 years ago. And the teacher told us to bring bread ties. And we were like, what are bread ties? And so we all brought, every single one of us, brought those little tabs that, you know, you twist the bread and then you kind of slip it on and it kind of has like a pincher-like quality on it and a flat bit to it. Every single one of us brought those. And um, <laughs> the... Um, the instructor was like, what is this? We're like, bread ties. These these came on our bagels, or these came on our rolls, or this came on our bread. And um, they meant the the wires you're describing wrapped in plastic. I was like, well, why didn't you just say to bring wire? Um, and it was totally unnecessary, by the way, for the entire project. Um, it was just someone who like learned a technique and knew how to replicate the technique and replicate and replicate and replicate but couldn't tell you like theory or ideation behind it and like an understanding of like okay if you do this to the pattern what's going to change if you do this to the pattern what's going to change and like let's face it a lot of people in the craft world are that and that's okay that's an okay place to be um but that's not how i operate like at all i want to know how and why and well why are we wrapping it like this how are we doing it like this and um <laughs> That's not, most people are just like, you just do these steps and suddenly everything's better. Mm -mm. Not my jam. Not my jam even a little bit. So, uh, that's a thing. <laughs> All right, so I got a little wetness on this thread so that when I put the super glue on it, it will seal a little bit better. Um, I'm going to do that right here. Am I on camera? I am very good. I'm getting better at this doing it on camera stuff. Like I'm, you just gotta learn where your hands are and 
all that. But yeah, it's, it's it, you know, a year after the pandemic of, and of me teaching online. Now I've got where my cameras are. What are you going to do? <laughs> all right, add a little water. Seal that super glue up. Nicely done. And I think, I think that will, I think that'll hold. And we'll tighten up right there. Yeah, look at that. Nicely done. Anna, you don't apologize for medical conditions. There's nothing you can do about it. So you shouldn't feel sorry. If you must say something, you can say thank you for your patience. We've talked about this. And I want you to be nicer to yourself. That's my homework for you, because I'm a teacher and I assign homework. <laughs> be nice to yourself, Anna. You're an amazing person who should feel strong and confident. You have been through a lot. And here you are still being kind to people you meet. That's right, so I give you homework. <laughs> You're not nice to yourself, Kalinor. You might be in trouble then, yes. You just might be in trouble. Even, I'm not perfect at it either. It's one of the reasons I, I harp on it so much with, with you, my friends, and my students, because um, I know the damage it does to my head, like on the inside. Oh, you were lousy with homework? That was never me. Um, I was so good with homework. If I did actually forget my homework, teachers are like, I'm sure I lost it. Let me write you down on 100 anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, but Calvin Dork, I mean, the homework I'm giving you is like, be kind to yourself. So just saying, like, if you have a moment and when you're like thinking negative thoughts, like, oh, I sh I'm, an, I'm an idiot. I should have done it this way. Well, let's just remove that I'm an idiot part and just be like, oh, I, sh I could have done it that way. And maybe it would have worked better. I'll try it next time. Right. It's it's removing these negative voices in our head. And I have really strong negative voices in my head. So like um, <laughs> that's why I harp on other people's is because I can't always change it in my my head. But maybe I can change it in yours. <laughs> just know I have the same negative voices in my head um, yeah I really do and if I'm your teacher then your homework is to be kind to yourself uh. <laughs> humble. Do we really need to be humble? No. Um, <laughs> it sounds like someone with far more confidence than I have. Um, I don't know. Why do we need to be humble? Like, like, do we really need to be humble? I don't know. Why can't we be cocky? If you're good at something, we should be good at something. And we should own up to it. Right? Like, Elon Musk doesn't go around, oh, I should be humble about the company I built. Why should we? Heck, I don't even think Bill Gates does it, though he might now that Melinda is leaving him. God, that has to be a tough dating market. How the heck do you figure out who's your friend? Yeah, you can own up to times being an idiot, sure. But you don't have to be mean to yourself. I think that's that's the thing I'm against, big time, is, is being mean to oneself. Because um, it just doesn't help anyone or anything. Um, all it does is help the man keep you down. <laughs> you know, like... You don't need to be more smart. That's not smarts. That's just being taught things that you weren't taught or were hidden from you or something. I don't know. Like my conspiracy theorist brain is like, 
No, you just weren't taught it, and our school system isn't quite set up for it. That's all. Rihanna, do not beat yourself up for a medical condition. I know, because I've been there, and I do it too. But I don't beat myself up for being tired anymore. I still beat myself up when I can't walk or go as far as maybe my husband on a hike or something. Yeah, Anna. Uh, Anna, how many languages can you type in? That sounds smart to me. Most Americans cannot do that. Don't knock yourself down. We don't stand for that on this channel. Stream. Twitch's streams. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Anna, we adore you, and we are so glad you are here, and we love it when you're here, and we think you're wonderful, smart, kind, and great to be around. We like having you here. But I don't like it when my friends say things like that about my friends and you're saying something mean about my friend Anna so you need to stop saying mean things about my friend Anna so I'll I, I'm closing up today because uh, I'm getting to the time where I gotta go to this meeting but one of the things uh, I really liked about the artist Omolora is Omolora's pronoun pronouns are love beloved and oh. So instead of saying, you know, she taught me this thing, you can say love taught me this thing, or beloved taught me this thing, or Omolora taught me this thing, or oh taught me this thing. And I realized, and it's relevant to our conversation we're having here, that one of the reasons I really liked that was it's tough to do like, oh, she's mean, or she, she doesn't know what she's talking about, or, um, Oh, she's never going to go anywhere. Like, you don't, you don't say mean things about someone when you're calling them love and beloved. Um, so I really respect that idea uh, to require others to refer to you as with kindness and love, um, with affection. Um, and that's just absolutely amazing to, to push that and to try to get that respect from other people for yourself. Um, Anna, you might consider it. Maybe, Anna, your pronoun should be love and beloved as well, so that you think of yourself with that much kindness and that so everyone around you treats you with that kindness and respect. Because I want you to have that kindness, love, respect, and affection at all times. Um, yeah, how do you, how do you go like, well, she said this and then love said this. And then like, you just don't get into like some catty conversation when you're referring to someone as love and beloved. It's, it's genius. It's genius. Um, odd, odd conversation, uh, take, I know, but Anna, I want you you to like refer to yourself at least in your head as as love and beloved um or smarty or um strong or amazon woman or you know whatever it is that means beauty and strength and smarts in your own head i think that will help you as your teacher <laughs> am i taking it too far i don't know but yeah, so I want everyone on my stream to think of themselves with extra kindness, love, and respect this week. You notice I started out there. It's like I, I planned it. What do you know? If you follow my Instagram, you know I plan everything, every time. Um, <laughs> that might have been planned just a little bit. Not like super planned, but you know, a little planned. I just want you all to be creative and <laughs> good. Be kind to yourself. We need that. 
And sometimes other people aren't going to give it to us, so we have to give it to ourselves. So, you know, yeah. Look up the artist Omolora. They're, uh, not they, Love is uh, the re artist in residence at the Courier Museum of Art. Uh, I absolutely adored the workshop on Sunday. It was a really great reintroduction to people um, to be in such a, a safe space and, um, and to have so many friends present who were working on their art at the same time as I was. I learned a lot on many levels. So I'm going to get going so I can get ready for my museum, or my museum, my library uh, foundation board meeting and see if, um, and see if I have enough water to get through that meeting. <laughs> Um, I love you all so much and I'm so glad you are here. I'm so glad you came to visit me today and I hope you will support each other as well, not just me, um, in the best way possible, like the world needs. Do something really good for someone this week, you know, just something surprising. I don't know, buy a homeless guy an ice cream cone. I don't know, um, especially in this heat. <laughs> Anyways, with love and science, I will see you next week, if not before, if I get a little extra time. Bye, y'all.